This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello, 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 and welcome to Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network powered by Raven International. I'm your host, Debbie Specter Weissman, the Dream Coach. This is the show where we talk about dreams, both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love. Well, if there's one bit of advice I'd want to convey to you, it's this. It's never too late. For instance, I didn't rediscover dream work until I was in my 50s. And I started this podcast a year and a half ago while I was in my 60s. Now, I'd be safe in saying that my guest today shares this philosophy. Max Eisenberg waited until her children were grown before completing her education in nutritional studies. And she's now dedicating her life to informing people, especially seniors, on how to keep their energy and health going as they age. She writes the blog, Max on Loving Life, and she's the author of the book, Who Took My Chocolate Cake? Welcome to Dream Power Radio, Max. Thank you, Debbie. I'm looking forward to this. Well, it's never too late, is it, Max? You know what, Debbie? I can't believe you said that because that's my mantra. Absolutely, (laughs) because you're in your, your middle 60s now. I started to change my life when I was in my middle 60s because I wasn't eating well, I wasn't eating right, and I wasn't feeling well. And now I'm into my eighth decade, and I feel phenomenal. I feel better today than I did when I was your age. And that's what I talk about in my weekly blog. I tell you, Matt, we're we're doing a podcast so people can't see you, but I couldn't believe when you said you were in your eighth decade, because you don't look it. Well, you know what? More important than that, I don't feel it. I mean, I meet people and I tell them my age, you know, in conversation, it comes up and they they almost fall on the floor because I have more energy than a whole room full of people. And it's because of my lifestyle. And that's exactly what my blog is all about. Because as I say, it's max on loving life, but you can't love life if you don't feel up to par. I tell you, that is so true. So tell me, how does a person's lifestyle affect their health? Oh my heavens, it's, it's just, it's your lifestyle is who you are. And um, one of my main things right now is my mantra in my blog is, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. And that's a pretty powerful phrase if you think about it. And I look around and I'm not even, I'm not even looking at people my age. I'm looking at younger people and they're not well. They have no energy. They, they, they've lost that oomph because they don't feel well. And so lifestyle plays an enormous part in that. You know, I wasn't born yesterday, and I'm talking to the people that are coming up there, and really people in their early 60s, because they have to meet the major challenges of getting older. They've got to prepare now so that when they're my age, they're going to feel great. And one other important thing, I don't want them to be dependent on doctors and medication as they get to be my age, because they might not be as available. I'm on no medications whatsoever. I'm on life <laughs> and I'm on, I'm on a healthy lifestyle. I tell you, that's wonderful. Cause I was gonna, I was gonna say a, a couple of things about you know aging. My mother died a couple of years ago, but when I went to visit her in Florida, I had seen that all of her friends' schedules all revolved around doctor's appointments and they lived their life based on you know what doctor they were going to see that day is that what we have to look forward to or can that be prevented oh absolutely you don't have that to look forward to and it can be prevented but you have to start now you can't wait till you're 80 to start i mean you could but just some simple lifestyle changes just eating the right way getting out there and getting that exercise and i don't mean in a 
in a fancy gym or with a trainer. Just get out there and walk. I'm lucky that I live in Southern California, so I, you know, I can get out there every single day and walk, and I do. And you know, there's some days I don't feel like it, but I push myself, I do it anyway, and it works. It, it helps you sleep better, it's just an amazing part of life. And you meet interesting people along the way. That is so true, and, and getting back to my mother, I mean, she was an example for me on, both how it's not too late and uh, you know how much exercise makes a difference. When I was growing up, mm -hmm. uh, she never, I never saw her exercise a day in her life. So after you know, she got older and she moved down to Florida, she had access to a pool and she started doing aqua aerobics. Uh, she basically modified, but at the time what was popular was the Jane Fonda workout, and she basically modified that for the water. And she started teaching it and for every day for a, a, over 20 years she got up every single morning and did this taught this aqua aerobics class and i tell you it it helped her because i mean you know she she died but she died at age 96 you know which i think is quite a nice long healthy lifetime and and she did this up to just a couple of months before she died so yeah, I, it's a testament to, yes, any exercise does help as you get older. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's an absolute must. You, you can't ignore it. You cannot sit around all day and do nothing. It's just not, not part of life. It's, it's boring, it's lonely, and it, it's, you sit and eat, and that's, that's not what you want to do. And it's funny because my mom, moved to Florida and she was there when she died. And I remember her in an aerobics class, a water aerobics class, and she was loving it. And she had never done that before. So you see your mother, as with my mother, it's just never too late. And that, that's one of my, my big mantras. Yes, yes. Um, so what would you say are the biggest factors affecting our health as we age? I think the biggest factor, and I've done a lot of research on this, and I'm, I'm talking about personal experiences, is what you eat. Um, I follow a Mediterranean type of diet because I don't know if you're familiar with the blue zones. These are people, there's six blue zones all over the world, and these people that live there live to be way into their 90s they have sex into their 90s they live to be in in their hundreds they're robust hardy people and they they follow a mediterranean style diet which is a lot of fruits and vegetables fish some chicken very little meat beans nuts seeds some red wine in other words a very healthy lifestyle and the one factor and and the one thing that i hate that I talk about is sugar. We must, we must reverse our thinking on sugar because it is not good for us. It destroys our insides. And uh, my book, Who Took My Chocolate Cake, I use chocolate cake as a metaphor for bad food. And um, I have a whole talk on sugar, what it does to you. And that's, um, that changing your diet to fit a healthy lifestyle is extremely important. Mm -hmm. I also eat five small meals a day because that's just how I am and it works better for me. And you know what, when people are always wanting to diet, they're always wanting to lose weight. When you follow a healthy diet, such as a Mediterranean style diet, your weight will come to where it should be. You don't ever have to worry about dieting. And it's a delicious way to eat. So what are some of your favorite foods that fit into this diet? <laughs> I love that you ask that. I eat an avocado every day. And I'll tell you something interesting. I don't even particularly like avocados. So you know why I eat them? because avocados like me. No, I would say avocados love me. You have to think about the foods that love you, and that's what you wanna eat. 
So I eat avocados. I try to eat my five fruits and vegetables every day. I start every morning off with, with a glass of filtered water and a half a lemon squeezed into it, the lemon juice, which by the way, right now in flu season is a very, very good, important thing to do. Uh, try to have an apple a day. Uh, whoever said that probably knew what they were talking about. I eat fish. I eat a lot of sardines. And this is, this is inexpensive. And uh, sardines are extremely good for you. They're as good for you as salmon or all the other fatty fish, which they say you should eat. I use olive oil or coconut oil in my cooking rather than the other oils, which are detrimental. Uh, just follow a very healthy, healthy diet. And in my blog, which comes out every Wednesday morning, I pick a different subject each week. And we talk about that. And people love it. They're, they're loving what they read, and I hope they're starting to follow it. For instance, in today's blog, I talked about is it the flu or just a nasty cold? Because people don't know the difference. And then I gave some tips how to prevent it. Uh, or if you do have it, what to do about it. Next week, I'm probably going to talk about detoxing your body. You know, you have all these diets out there that say, oh, you've got to drink this powder. You've got to take this because it will cleanse your body out. No, no, no. You don't have to do that. The only thing those uh, will clean out is your wallet. If you follow a Mediterranean style program like I'm on, that will clean your body out and detoxify it. So just, yes. Yeah, let's get back to sugar, because I know that's a big topic and an important topic. And uh, with all the sugar that everybody eats, I mean, I think, you know, sugar is in almost any kind of food that we eat that's processed practically. How do you wean yourself off of sugar? Well, the first place, I'm lucky in the sense that sugar gives me a headache. So I spent a lot of my life with migraine headaches. And it wasn't until I gave up sugar that I realized that was the problem. So for me, it was not that big a deal. And right now, you know, I could pass a box of candy. I just pass up on it. And I, I very, very rarely will eat dessert. And if I do, it has to be something that is homemade that looks like it's it's a killer killer dessert and i'll take one bite i will never eat a whole dessert in fact in my book i have a whole chapter on what's the the law that says we have to eat dessert but unfortunately sugar is found in everything it's in ketchup it's in toothpaste it's in places you wouldn't think of and um it's, it's just extremely detrimental for your body. It actually destroys your body from the inside and you don't even realize what's going on until it's too late. You know, the more sugar you consume, the more nutrients are removed from your body because people, people who consume larger amounts of sugar have lower amounts of fiber and calcium and iron, magnesium, all the important essentials your body needs. So it's important. The Mediterranean diet, which of course I'm on, uh, does not have any sugar in it. And right now, and you know what, let me tell you something, and for your listeners out there, if you give something up, such as sugar, it only takes three days for your body to decide, oh, I don't need that and you will stop the cravings. It'll take you three days, and in order to stop the cravings, you know, there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, drink a lot of water, which you should do anyway, take a walk, dance around your house, call a friend, and the cravings will go away. And of course, don't forget, you get sugar from fruit, and that, that's very important. So if you feel the need to have that piece of candy, take an apple. And of course, sugar is sugar, but when you get the sugar from fruit, it's processed differently in your body. And don't forget, you're getting all the vitamins and minerals from that fruit, as well as that sugar. 
Mm. Well, this is all fascinating, uh, but we have to take a little break now. We're speaking with lifestyle and nutritional expert, Max Eisenberg, and we'll be right back. What do Thomas Jefferson, Elias Howe, and Paul McCartney have in common? They all understood the value of dreams, and as a result, the ideas, inventions, and creations from their dreams affect us to this day. What great ideas are you leaving on your pillow at night? Sign up for a complimentary consultation at my website, thedreamcoach.net, and discover why your dreams are a terrible thing to waste. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter weissman Yes, and welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, Debbie Specter weissman <clears throat> And we're speaking with Max Eisenberg about nutrition and lifestyle. So, Max, you know, you're talking about you know uh, how you are an advocate for the Mediterranean diet. But let's say you know you're deciding, okay, I've been eating badly my whole life, and I want to change, but I'm not sure what to do. Are you have any tips on how to easily add uh, healthier foods to our diet? Absolutely. One, one of the easiest ways is to start eating salads. And I don't mean you have to go crazy and that's all you can eat. For instance, at breakfast, uh, well, you don't want a salad for breakfast. At breakfast, have your coffee, a piece of fruit, an egg. Um, I don't eat bread because I'm gluten intolerant, but I, I don't put that out there because the average person it does not have that problem. Have an egg, have an English muffin, and have, um, you can have avocado on it. You know, avocado toast is so big right now. And of course, start your day with that lemon, squeeze lemon in a glass of water. So right away, you have two vegetables you've had for breakfast, lemon and avocado. Uh, for lunch, have something light. Instead of a regular sandwich, have a lettuce sandwich. A lot of restaurants offer that. And of course, if you're working, you have to stick to the three meals a day. But if, if you're working from home, say, you can have five smaller meals a day, which is a healthier way to eat. I also uh, try to eat early at night because what do you do at night? You eat and you sit down and watch TV. And, uh, you know, all the food you've eaten is going to fat because you're not moving around. So you don't want to eat anything really heavy at night. At night, I usually have a piece of fish or a piece of chicken with some salad. It's, I'm, um, you know, I'm a small eater and I, of course I do eat five small meals a day. You have to, if, you're read, if your listeners would Google Mediterranean diet, they're gonna find a wealth of information out there. And there are all kinds of interesting ways to get started. And you've got to get that sugar out of your body. Let me give you an interesting statistic, Debbie. In the early 1900s, the average person consumed 10 teaspoons of sugar a year because they didn't have that corner bakery to go to and pick out all those delicious looking desserts. Today, the average person eats 50 pounds of sugar a year. Wow. No wonder everybody wow. is sick. <laughs> is that amazing? It's, it you is. just don't realize it. Wow. And, that, cut, that and cut out those desserts. <laughs> right. You know what? I, I say desserts are great for special occasions. Not every day. That's just not necessary. And, um, you know, this is why the heavy sugar usage is accountable for the, the rise of juvenile diabetes and, and, you know, a lot of diabetes in the regular population. And I will tell you, sugar is the most addictive thing on the planet. It's even more addictive than heroin. So know that. And for people who are trying to give it up, just know that in advance. But you can do it. Look at the rewards. It is never too late. So sure, you, you can do it. A, a little a while ago, you were talking about being cold and flu season. 
Uh, is there anything that people can do to proactively protect themselves from getting sick? Absolutely. You know what? Over the uh, Christmas holidays, I was at the store one day. I was at Walmart, in fact, and I was waiting in line. And I noticed a gentleman standing next to me, an older man, not quite my age, but, you know, probably middle 70s. And he looked tired. And I said, How's, how are your holidays going? And he said, oh, he said, I'm tired. I said, I've been working a double shift. And I said, what do you do? He said, I'm an emergency room physician. And I said, oh, my heavens, how do you prevent yourself from getting the flu? And he said, wash your hands. And you know what, people out there, this is so important, especially if you've been out and about, then you come home, keep washing your hands all day because you never know what you've picked up. That's the most proactive thing you can do. Uh, another thing is get enough rest. They find that people that get less than six hours of sleep a night are more prone to get the flu. And uh, yeah, just just live your regular life, but eat eat healthy, walk, drink a lot of water, all the, all the basic things, and get that flu shot. All good. That's very important. And it's not too late even right now because I think the flu season is just really coming upon us. Well, a second ago, you spoke about the importance of sleep. Can you tell me why this is a concern and, and what effect sleep does have on our health? Absolutely. Um, you should strive to get a good seven to eight hours of sleep a night. And of course, that's easier said than done. I know people that can't get to sleep or they get to sleep and they wake up. And I do that sometimes. And it's the worst thing on the earth. But it's, it's just not good for your health. And actually, if you don't get enough sleep, your body, your body's defenses will make you gain weight some kind of protection. It's, it's very interesting. If you're trying to lose weight and you're not getting enough sleep, you're fighting yourself. Um, there are all kinds of things you can do. Of course, you shouldn't be on your phone playing words at night before you go to sleep. And I know many of us do, me included, although that doesn't seem to impede my, my getting to sleep. Put some soft music on. Make sure your room is very dark. Try to get to sleep at the same time every night. Don't eat a heavy dinner just before you go to bed. Eat light. You should eat light and early at night. Uh, don't exercise before you go to bed. Uh, don't watch TV because you get stressed out. <laughs> just basic things like that. Um, I know this is a very difficult problem problem for a lot of people, but you really have to get yourself on track because it's, it's not good. It's, you, you've got to get that sleep. Oh yeah. And it's interesting that the uh, tips that you just gave us are very similar to what I talk about as uh, things to do to promote sleep for dreaming. So I'm wondering, you know, do you remember your dreams? I don't always, and I know there are, there are reasons for that, which I've never been able to figure out. I wake up after dreaming and the dream was so real, I can't believe it was a dream. I will remember bits and pieces, but I'm never able to remember the whole thing. And sometimes I remember very little of it. Hmm. But it, it, I know dreams are very interesting and very telling. Oh yes, and I know you must dream. Yes, well, I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little tip for that. The next time, okay. uh, when you're remembering, you know, a dream that you 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 know it, it has that effect where you say, "Oh yeah, I'm really remembering this." As soon as you start to wake up, don't move your body. Just lie where you are and mentally go over as much of the dream as you can when you're in that sort of space between sleeping and waking up where you can tell your brain, okay, yeah, I remember this part. I remember this part. I remember this part. And then as soon as you really feel you have a handle on what you remember about it, write it down, which is why I always advocate, you know, having a little 
notebook and paper next to your bed so you can write it down as soon as you can get it. Or if you're technically inclined and not everybody is, they have so many, there are many dream apps on, on phones these days where you can just, you know, turn around, press a button and record the dream like that. So there, there are ways to do it. There are a couple other techniques too, but that's the biggest thing is to physically not move because there is that relationship in your body between the physical movement and the part of the brain where we dream and how that's affected when we get up. That's one, one little tip I can give you about that. Oh, that's, that's just wonderful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So one thing I want to ask you also is that being healthy isn't just about having low blood sugar, keeping away from sugar and eating healthy. You also talk about the importance of our mind. So you can talk about how our mood affects us and things we could do to really... Uh, oh, absolutely. Great. Yeah. That's a great, great comment and question, Debbie. As I've gotten older, I've, I stay away from negative people and I meet a lot of them because I live in a community, it's 55 plus. You know what? I instinctively can see a negative person. I, they're not part of my life. I tend to, I always see the glass as half full. Never, never, never as half empty. And that, that's very important. Your mindset, how you look at the world, super important. And that you don't realize how your mind controls your physical body. So you must always look at the world as through rose-colored glasses. And I know when I walk, I talk to people. I know other people, because I see them, they don't talk to anyone. They look down when they walk. I'm curious about people. I love people. So I talk to them. And I, I chat with them. And it's, it's fun. And it, it makes your day. So you, you must always have a good outlook. And, you know, I know, especially at my age, there are stresses in life. All of us have them. That's part of life. But you've got to learn how to handle them because stress will knock your immune system down. And that's, uh, that's not very good. You've got to, got to be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes if you have to scream out loud, just do it. It'll make you feel better. Oh, yes. Well, I tell you, Max, you are keeping your energy up and, and your mind alive by uh, writing the blog that you do. Tell us more about it and how people can find it. Absolutely. The blog comes out every Wednesday morning. And uh, <clears throat> I just talk about one subject each week. You don't have to go through and look at a lot of different things. My blog is called maxonlovinglife.com, so you can go there and sign up for it. There are some local things at the bottom, three or four, but it's basically a blog for anyone to read, and it gives you good information, and I tell you to please, I give my email in there, and I say, please contact me and let me know how you like it or don't like it or what you'd like me to blog about it's just a lot of fun and people are loving it i get hundreds of thank you letters each week thank you for that good information and and it's free yes so it's max on loving life.com and if they want to email me it's max at max eisenberg.com and Eisenberg is I-Z-E-N-B-E-R-G. And um, if they want my book, they can go to whowantsmychocolatecake.com. And that's hopefully uh, people will join our blog because I really do have good, honest, up-to-date information on how to keep the oomph in your life. Because you know what, Debbie? That's what it's all about. Yes, we certainly do need to keep the oomph in our life. And Max, you provide it. And thank you so much for being on Dream Power Radio today. We've been speaking with lifestyle and nutrition expert, Max Eisenberg. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector-Weissman saying, 
Sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network, powered by Raven International.